Good day, friends. May God bless you all abundantly in the name of the Lord Jesus. Look, yesterday we spoke that the power of life and death is in the tongue. That's it. The power of life and death is in the tongue. Is in the tongue. So, what does this mean? What I say will bring life to me or death. It will edify, strengthen, or it will make me sick, weak, and I'll die. It all depends on what I say. But where does the word come from, which comes from my mouth? Where do the words which come out of my mouth come from? It comes from my mind. It comes from here, my head, my thoughts. If I have godly thoughts, so I will speak the words of God. It's amazing. And the words of God are spirit and life. When I speak, I pass life. And not only do I pass or transmit life, but I live this life. So, my dear friends, it means that if my mind is not focused on the words of God, if my thoughts are roaming through this world outside, if my thoughts are attracted by this world and I speak the words of this world and I say words futile and vain which come from this world, so I will provoke death for myself. My soul will get sick because of the fragile and weak words which come out of my mouth. So life and death are in the word which I pronounce. Is in the word which I pronounce. So how many people watch me now this moment? Look at this. How many people watch me this moment? And they think about killing themselves. Because life has been held disgraceful. Their marriage is destroyed. Their children are on drugs. Parents are divorced. Unemployment. Debts. Drugs. Etc. Hell of a life. And then the person says, I'm worthless. My life has no value. Look at this. Look at this. She begins to tell herself. She doesn't necessarily speak to others, but she thinks, my life has no solution. I'm a lost case. Only dying, really. So, when she speaks like this, she is listening to the words which come to her mind, inspired by the devil. Satan here in her ears, he speaks, yes, your life is worthless, go and rest, kill yourself, etc., etc. So the person accepts that in her mind and speaks. At times the person won't necessarily speak, but thinks and gives strength to those thoughts. Well, my dear friends, think about your life. Think about what you're thinking right now. What are you thinking? Is it for good 
or is it for evil? O que você está pensando? É bom What ou é you're ruim? thinking about right now, is Se that good or evil? O que é bom? If you are thinking on what is good. So when you speak, good things will come out of your lips, your mouth. But if what you are thinking is evil, certainly you will find a shoulder to say these evil things, to repeat these evil things which are in your mind, and therefore share, spread what is evil, spread what's evil. For example, just for the sake of an example, a person is jealous of someone. Let's suppose you are envious rather of someone. Why are you envious? Because you look at the life of that person. Oh, if I could, if I had that, why does he have and I don't have? So you begin to nurture thoughts from hell. The devil blows in your mind that you are unworthy, he deserved it, and you did not deserve it. So you begin to cry. These, this is the problem of people, of a majority of people. And when a person comes to the church, we work with the Word of God. This very moment, now I am here to speak to you about the Word of God, the Word which came out of the mouth of God. The mouth of God. And the Word which comes out from the mouth of God does not return to Him empty. It accomplishes what He wants. It brings life. It brings hope. It promotes faith, strength, courage. It promotes bravery, boldness. It makes a person to be a giant within herself. A giant is born because she thinks the thoughts of God and repeats these thoughts. She becomes a giant. Look at what the Lord Jesus said, which is for you who watches Matthew chapter 16, verse 26. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Jesus here is speaking about the value of the soul, an unmeasurable value of the soul. And the truth is, my friend, when the soul detaches from the body, the soul sees the body. There is a testimony of a young man who had this opportunity. His soul detached from his body and he saw the body there. What he does not mention is that with the body, where the angels of God and the angels of Satan what he does not mention is that when the body, or rather the soul, detaches from the body, if this soul obeyed, heard and obeyed the word of God, then two angels come to carry the soul to God, to paradise, to Abraham's bosom. But if this soul did not give ears to the word of God, so this soul is carried by two demons or even more to hell. And there is no way out then. There is no way out then. Once a person dies, once the soul detaches from the body, then my dear friend, there is nothing else to do for her. I have heard that many people after their parents or children, their loved ones pass on. 
they pray for them, they make, they light candles, and they do many things in order to help that soul which detached from that body. But it's worthless, it's a waste of time, a waste of time. Once you're dead, it's done. After death, it's done. When I lost my mother, my beloved mother and father too, when I loved them, I could do nothing else. As long as they were alive, there was still a chance to save them. I believe my mother was saved and I believe as well my father was saved. But if they had not been saved, it would have solved nothing to be there praying for them. It would solve nothing to be there interceding on behalf of their souls. Because it is for men to die once, appointed for men to die once, and after this, the judgment. So a person whose soul detached from the body, if the soul heard, practiced, obeyed the word of God, she will have eternal life. She will have eternal life with God, of course. However, if she did not hear the word of God, she gave no attention to the word of God, then her soul goes to hell and no one will be able to do anything. And then comes that question. Comes that question, Bishop, how do I know if my soul will go to heaven? How do I know that my soul will not go to hell? It's simple for you to know. How is your life? How is your life right now, this very moment? Is it joyful? Are you a joyful person, a happy person? Are you well with life? Are you well with yourself and above all with God? Are you in peace with your conscience? Are you in peace with God? Then your soul has salvation. If you remain like this, if you maintain these thoughts with you, however, if your soul suffers, for example, you are depressed, you live with depression. What is depression? Depression is a spirit which suffocates the soul of a person. So if the soul is being suffocated by a spirit, it is because this evil spirit has access to the soul. So if this soul detaches from the body with depression, there's no salvation for her anymore. So we are working with all our strength to rescue the greatest number of people, or better said, souls, who are at the edge of the abyss. Who are waiting for any situation for them to jump off this cliff. But if the soul or this person kills herself, she will suffer a lot more infinitely and a lot more and eternally there in hell. Because if here on earth, where she has the body, she has life, she has an option to choose life or death. She has the option of choosing life and she chooses death. There's no way if she kills herself, it's done for her life. Listen to what I'm saying, my friends. We are not joking or playing church here. We're not playing religion here. We are prophesying the word of God. Jesus speaks about the soul. That the soul is worth a lot more than the entire world. It's of no use to win the whole world, to gain the whole world, but lose your soul. 
because the body has an expiry date. Is it not true? The body has an expiry date, but not the soul. The soul lives eternally. If your soul lives in suffering now, this moment, and you kill yourself, you will continue suffering, but on a much greater scale, because in hell there is no rest. There are no moments of sleeping. Nobody rests. No one can take sleeping pills there. There's no sleeping pills in hell. There the soul suffers exactly a thousand times worse than it suffers here on earth. This is why the Lord Jesus said, What profit is it for a man to win the whole world, to win success, money, fame, medals, and etc., etc., to win everything in this world, but lose her soul? What will you give, my dear friend, in exchange for your soul? For the joy which God wants to give to your soul. What would you give? Bishop, I'd give everything possible in order to have peace, to have a little bit of peace, to have the right of being at least a little bit happy. I'd give everything. Very well, that's for free. What you need to give, the salvation of your soul is free. But what you need to give in exchange of the soul is to obey the word of God, is to think the way God thinks, is to speak how God would speak if he were in your place. We are here blowing the trumpet. Whoever wants to hear the word of God and obey will have life and life with an eternal life. Your life will be happy, but those who do not want, they will suffer. For the sake of an example, I'm speaking to you now. Just, just give me a second. Pay attention. My friends. I want people to see my eyes. The Bible says the eyes are the lamp of the soul. Look into my eyes. Look into my eyes. Do you see sadness in me? Do you see agony in me? Do you see a soul which is saddened, anguished, depressed within me? You do not see this. You do not see, of course not. Nonetheless, my face, it brings on the outside what is inside of me. Death has already been overcome. I've already overcome death. The Lord Jesus said, He who believes in me, who lives, believes, obeys my word, even if he dies, he will live. So death has no power over my life. The devil has no power over my life. Hell has no power over my life. Nothing that exists Evil, be it envy, curses, plagues, witchcraft, sorceries, nothing has power over my life. Do you know why? Because one day I heard this word, the word of Jesus, and I embraced it. I held on to it. I married it. I assumed this word. 55 years we've been preaching, announcing, prophesying, speaking about this word. Do you know why? In order to win your soul, my dear friend, to remove this distaste, this bitterness which you carry in your chest, to get rid of this lack of peace, this lack of tranquility, this unhappiness, my happiness, for example, is not in my marriage. I'm very happy with my marriage. I'm very happy with my daughters. I'm very happy with my children. But my happiness is not in my children. It's not in my marriage. It's not in my work. 
It is in nothing unless except what's in me, which is the word of God. So the word which I speak to you, I apply in my life. I apply within my own life. And I am very happy. Regardless of the problems, regardless of the slenders, of the injustices, regardless of the persecutions, regardless of what people say or do not say, I really don't care. I am happy. And no one will take this away from inside of me because the Word of God is inside of my head. In this word, I confess it with joy, happiness, and I seek to take it, to transfer, to share it to those who have a sound mind. If you have a sound mind, then embrace the word of God, use the word of God, read the word of God, meditate upon the word of God. But not only should you know the word of God, you need to practice it. Because if you do not practice the word, nothing will happen in your life. So the practice of the word of God is when I confess the word of God, I am confessing the words which came out of the mouth of God, which cannot return empty. So you who is growing, crying, we will pray for you for this disgrace, this curse that is there suffocating your soul, it may leave and you may be free. God, my dear friend, is great. He is so great, so great, so great that he does nothing small. And he is so perfect, so perfect, so perfect that he does nothing imperfect. So when we embrace, we grab on, we hold on to this God through his word, we hold on to life. Very well. We are promoting the 27th, last Sunday of this month in all Universal Church of the Kingdom of God in the entire planet, the entire planet, to agglutinate those who are lost, those who are disorientated, those who once had an experience with God, they were healed, they were delivered, they had their financial life restored, their family restored. But to take care of their business, of their lives, they let go of their faith a bit and take care of their spiritual life. And they fell and are lost. They ask God, what should I do to re encounter with you to have what I once had or to get to know you to have an encounter with you because on the 27th many will re-encounter will have a re-encounter but for others it will be a true encounter the pouring the outpouring of the Holy Spirit because on the 27th not this Sunday but the following one this 27th it is for all to receive the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of exit, the Spirit of solution, the Spirit of life, the Spirit which guided Jesus his entire life, the Holy Spirit. So on the 27th, it will be a special day for those who say, I am lost, disorientated, I do not know what to do, I'm clueless. And if perhaps you are that kind of person who's very, very proud, very proud, and you say, ah, no, I don't know if I'm going to go because I don't know what they're going to speak about me. Listen, nobody cares about such. No one really cares. No one is observing you. Everyone cares for himself, takes care of himself. In the Universal Church, we invite, we make movements and people come because of their personal needs and no one really cares about anyone sometimes we have celebrities known famous people famous people in society they come to the church sometimes they put a hat they put clothes you know very simple to to match with the people in general and not be recognized as if 
people actually give attention to such. There was once our friend Silva Santos, he went to the church in João Dias and he was worried about being stopped by people. He went, participated in the service and no one said anything. They did not even notice his presence. My friends, when people come to the Universal Church, they come as if they're coming to an emergency room, a hospital, in search of a way out. They're not worried about others. They want to be healed. She wants to be free. She wants a chance. So do not give ears to such fruitless thoughts, worthless thoughts. Oh, what are they going to think? What are they going to say? No one's going to think anything. And if they do, what's that going to help? Whether they think or not, what difference will it make? My friends, be intelligent. Just a little bit. I ask you to be intelligent. Just a little bit. Give God a chance. Because He is there by your side. He is always with you. But as long as you are not with Him, He can do nothing for you. It is necessary for you to throw yourself in His arms. And on the 27th, we will have this campaign for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit will be a revival in all the work of the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God. On the 27th, the whole day, the services will run the following. We are going to seek, we are going to tear our hearts apart, we are going to put all our strength in order for you to have a re-encounter with God. Praise be to God.